Hello everyone, and to celebrate Gauss's 248th birthday, he's looking pretty good if you ask me, we're going to be evaluating, once again, the Gaussian integral. So without further ado, let's get to it. The method we have for this year is going to be expanding out this e to the minus x squared term in terms of its power series, and then we're just going to evaluate the power series to get our final answer. So let's go ahead and do that. We know that e to the minus x squared is just equal to uh, the sum from k equals 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the k times x to the 2k over k factorial. And this right here just follows from the basic series you have for e to the x that you learn in calculus. You just replace the x with a minus x squared and you get that. So if we were to actually integrate this right here, so just taking the indefinite integral for now, what we're going to get is actually relatively simple in terms of the actual integration. Uh, we still have that negative 1 to the k, uh, and then we just have x to the 2k plus 1 by, you know, the reverse power rule, and then just divided by k factorial, and then times 2k plus 1. And, of course, we're still summing from k equals 0 all the way up to infinity. But in this expression right here, we still have an x. Again, it's an indefinite integral. It's just a power series uh, for form of the error function, right? So how exactly can we take care of this? Well, one thing that we can do is just take the limit as x goes to infinity. That way we can actually find the value for this integral. Now, the simplest way to do this wouldn't be to take the limit as x goes to infinity and then add the limit as x goes to minus infinity. It would be much simpler if we just said, well, this is an even function, so we can actually just say this is 2 and then evaluate this whole expression right here from 0 to infinity. So we can just take, uh, take 2 times the limit as x goes to infinity. The reason for that just being that if you plug zero into this expression right here, it's just zero. So now what we have is just this expression right here. We have this fun little sum. And what better way to evaluate a sum than to use complex analysis? In a video I did a couple months back, I talked about a way to evaluate sums using complex analysis by finding the residues of this function right here times cotangent of pi uh, x. But you'll notice that we have this negative 1 here, and that makes things a little bit more complicated. So a similar formula to the cotangent one that I did in the other video is actually one with cosecant, where this negative 1 term is accounted for. We're going to use the following theorem, which is just that if I have a sum from k equals negative infinity all the way up to infinity of negative 1 to the k times f of some k, then this right here is equal to negative pi times the sum of all the residues of cosecant pi x times f of x, where these residues are at the poles of f. Now, for the sake of this not being a 30-minute video, I'm not going to go ahead and prove this, but we can go ahead and do the first couple steps just to see that this is actually the case, right, and why this might make sense. So let's go ahead and find the residues of this function right here, this cosecant of pi x, and then times f of x right here. But let's find the residues of this function right here at the poles of this cosecant right here, because f can, base, f can be anything, any you know continuous differentiable function, right, in the complex plane. But this cosecant, we actually know where the poles are. So the poles of this cosecant right here are just going to be every single integer. So, you know, 0, 1, negative 1, etc., right? So if we just take the definition for a simple pole, which these are, right? So we just have x minus some k, where k is an integer, and then we have f of x right here. This is right here is equal to that. Uh, and then divided by sine of uh, pi x, because that is just cosecant. And we take the limit as x approaches k. What we end up getting is just f of x, and then plus f prime of x, and then times x minus k and then divided by uh, the derivative of sine of pi x, which is just going to be pi times the cosine of pi x right here. And take the limit as x approaches k, this term right here goes to zero, and we see that we have this extra pi term and the cosine of pi times k. But the cosine of pi times k is just going to be negative one to the k. So as a result, the residues of cosecant of pi x times f of x is just going to be, well, negative 1 to the k over pi and then times f of k right here. When combining the 
uh, the sum of the residues from both the cosecant and the F, you can derive that this right here uh, is equal to this right here as well. Uh, once you show that the actual contour uh, uh, itself around the entirety of the complex plane goes to zero. But let's go ahead and actually use this formula right here. So what exactly is our f of x going to be? Well, our f of x is just going to be everything right here, just uh, minus the negative one to the k. So in this case right here, all we need to find is just going to be the residue of x to the 2k plus 1, where this is a function of k, it should be noted, not of x. x right here in this case is just going to be literally just some number we don't really care about. It might as well be a constant c, right? Uh, and then times k factorial, and then times 2k plus 1. Uh, and the residue of this right here times the cosecant of pi times k. And then at the poles of f right here, but the only pole of f is just going to be uh, when this denominator equals zero right here. And the only place where that actually happens is going to be when k equals negative one. So we're gonna have when k equals, uh, sorry, when k equals negative one half. Uh, so at negative one half, right? So let's just go ahead and uh, find the residue of this at one half. So actually finding our residue right here, what we're going to have is just going to be k plus one half and then times x to the uh, 2k plus 1, and then times cosecant of pi k, divided by k factorial, and then times 2k plus 1. But this 2k plus 1 can also just be written as 2 times uh, k plus a half. So let's just go ahead and do that. And we see that these two terms just cancel. And at this point, we're free to just plug in k equals negative 1 half into everything. So what we end up finding is that our residue right here is actually just equal to, well, uh, the cosecant of negative pi over 2, but that right there is just going to be negative 1. So we're just going to have negative 1, and then divided by negative 1 factorial, or sorry, <laughs> negative 1 half factorial, very big difference, negative 1 half factorial, and then times 2. But what exactly is this x term? Well, plugging in k equals negative 1 half yields that the exponent right there is just going to be 0. So we actually don't need to worry about the x term at all. It just completely vanishes, right? So what we're left with for our residue is just this right here. So let's go ahead and stick on the extra term, or the extra factor of minus pi, uh, which leaves us with pi over 2 times negative 1 half factorial uh, is equal to, well, not quite our integral, because remember we had that extra factor of 2 out front, so, you know, to just to write that in, these twos right here just cancel, right? And this right here equals i, uh, our integral, the Gaussian. And now here we have a fork in the road. We can kind of do one, or, one of two things, right? We could just uh, find or assume the value of minus one half factorial, you know, just say it's the square root of pi, and we get our answer. But one interesting thing is that this right here, negative one half factorial, uh, upon a u substitution, uh, in the Gaussian is actually just the exact same thing as it. it you just sub in uh, u equals x squared and you end up with just negative one half factorial. So these right here are actually just equal to each other. So another way we could write this is just i squared is equal to pi, or in other words, the Gaussian integral is equal to just the square root of pi. Awesome. It should be noted that the reason we are actually able to use this formula right here um, since it does sum from k equals negative infinity uh, instead of zero, is this handy factorial uh, in the denominator right here. k factorial for some negative integer is just going to blow up to infinity, but since it's in the denominator, it just makes that entire term zero. And you might ob also object that because of that same term, whenever we try to bound the contour, uh, we're actually integrating around, it doesn't go to zero, but if you actually pick sufficient x right here, uh, it will be bounded and uh, the formula does still work. As evidenced uh, here, you know, it yields accurate results. But at any rate, I hope you all enjoyed this video and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.